Welcome to my office. Right, this is day 89 and uh, I feel good. Uh, my ribs muscle are much better. Um, I've done my exercises today and uh, I'm doing it already for a week. So I still have to do another two, three weeks. Uh, in that two, three weeks, that means I'm going to have only once a week practice session on the go kart. Uh, after three weeks, uh, we will try to get more and more practice session two, three times a week. Uh, we're just gonna see how it goes with my uh, ribs muscles. But even uh, when I'm working, I all the time thinking about Daytona Sandon Park circuit. I'm thinking. I'm thinking where I'm doing mistakes, uh, why I can't get in 45 at the moment. Um, uh, I'm thinking about racing line, am I taking correct racing line, am I do correct braking points, acceleration points, turning in points as well. So all that is in my head now, plus on the top of that, I have to think about losing the weight so I still have to lose another 10 kilos and I have to do that as quick as possible because 90 days it uh, looks like uh, it seems like it's a lot but believe me it will take us about 30 days to lose that 10 kilos and I'm even not sure about that so let's hope 30 days is enough the other thing which i have to remember is sport exercises uh, not about only uh, not only for my rib muscles but also i have to i have to make my hands stronger to keep steering wheel uh, i have to make my body stronger to sit in a go kart and uh, to be strong enough to keep concentration because uh, some of the races is one hour some of the races two hours so all that time you have to be hundred percent concentrated on a race you're not allowed to to be distracted by anything and especially you're not allowed to be distracted just because you are not healthy enough so guys it's a plenty of work to do if we want to achieve our target and the most important we have to build self-confidence and self-belief if we are not confident and we don't believe ourselves forget about any quick lap times doesn't matter what you do in your life racing singing drawing uh, whatever running football player scientist engineers architects designers everyone everyone if you want to be the best you have to believe yourself if you don't have it don't worry just work on it every day every minute every second just work on it lights out lying in your arms and these feelings start to change
Yeah. Hello, can I have a pancakes with a syrup, please? Yeah, that's That's it, thank you. Hello, this is Anatoly calling you. Oh, hello, how are you? Good, good, thank you. Yourself? I'm well, thank you. I would like to book practice session for 2 o'clock for DMAX. Okay, not a problem. Uh, when, when for today? Yeah, for today. Okay, would you like to go for the 20 minute session or the 40 minute session? A 20 minute session. Okay, uh, so you need to arrive to us at half past one, is that okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, right, so that's £39.60 altogether. Yeah. Now, as always, I just need to make you aware that bookings are non-transferable, non-refundable, and just make sure you bring this card with you on arrival. Okay. And um, the postcode you gave me before, is that where your card's registered? Yes. Brilliant. Okay, so if I could take the name as it appears on the front of the card, please. Mr. A. Dulco. Okay, great. Just stay with me two secs, um, and I'm just going to take that payment through now for you, okay? No problems. Processing. Great, that's all gone through for you. Okay, so we'll see you at half past one later today. Perfect, thank you. Brilliant, many thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Right. Day 87, and we are at Daytona Sandon Park for a 20 minute practice session. I'll take it nice and easy today because my rib muscle is still hurts. So let's see how it goes. Hi there, are you okay? Hi, yeah. How are you? Hey. How are you, mate? Uh, Good. They just going in the back there. Uh, you're doing one session today. Oh. Sorry? Just doing one session today? Yeah. No, I just check the car. Please. It's in the car. Can I sign in and bring it to you? Yeah, yeah. You can Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Hi there. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. If you could just sign on the pad for me, please. Do you just need to see from us today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah just uh, see. Medium. Okay. Thank you. Please speak to a member of the team.
Okay, so you're going to start off here in the pit lane at all times, two miles an hour walking speed. You're going to come out of the pit lane. As you go to leave, check over your shoulder, make sure you're not pulling out in front of anybody else. Make your way out onto the track, providing it's clear, around, down the main straight, turn one, two, three, four, five, cross this top straight, six, seven, and eight, back past the pits and over the start line to start another lap. Uh, if you have any problems whilst you're out on the circuit, if you want to break, you think there may be a problem with your car, something like that, come into the pit lane. This is the entrance to the pit lane here. There's a white line that runs around the outside of the circuit and it says pits on the ground. Stay to the outside of that, follow it round and into the pit lane, remembering two miles an hour at all times. If you're stuck, you can't turn around, hand up in the air, the marshals will come and help you as soon as possible. Don't put your hands or feet outside the car at any time. At the end of your session, the chequered flag will go out here at the start line, yellow lights will come on, nice and slow, back round, and into the pit lane. Okay, hi, what's your name? Oh, hi. You're going to be caught one, two, three, just look up for me? Yeah, perfect. What's your name? Oh, well, you are going to be in car 145, look up for me? Yeah, that's perfect. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. So you're going to be 150. 150. That's the one. Cheers, thank you. Ooh. I love the seat at the front. Hi, yeah. <laughs> How are you, my friend? Good, good. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, maybe good. Nice. Exactly. You know, like I, I'm doing racing. You know, I, I'm I'm very I, interested. I this, uh -huh. Yeah, I'm very interested in the, in, the, in the racing cars. You know, and um, when you relaxed, yes, you are fast. But if you don't have inside inside that 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 little fire yeah. which will fire you up you can't and, and suddenly you want to go further you want to go quicker if you don't have it you can't, you can't. just like a lot here we go yeah 
Exactly. Yeah, so you, you can't do anything in the McLaren. Exactly. You know, how good is he? No. Yeah, he's good, but he can't drive now because McLaren. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, and, 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 and this is the, 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 the main thing. Like, if, if the team too relaxed, if the team pull you back, so the driver will be bad. If driver pulls back team, so the team gonna be bad. You know, gonna look bad. You know, so that's why both of them should have that fire to go further. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, and and McLaren is interesting team. Here we are, sir. Sure. I'll give you your luggages. I can't stop thinking about yesterday practice session. 47 seconds flat and I need to get quicker than 45.6 so if we take calendar I am two years behind and somehow I need to get back in 2017 yesterday all over the place but not on the racing line I try to keep racing line but I've been sliding I've been too early on the brakes too aggressive with the steering wheel the corners instead of going on the racing line I've been understeer oversteer and nothing good of it nothing good the result is terrible but there is a good side of that practice session. I could feel all my mistakes. And lap after lap, I was doing better and better and better. So my last lap was 47 seconds, 47 flat. So that means I've been trying to correct my driving style, to correct my mistakes, and that is good. Yesterday practice session has bad point, which is a lap time, but it has a big plus as well, and that plus is my feelings I can feel I can feel the go-kart I can feel grip between tires and the tarmac so I can say now that yesterday practice session was positive rather than negative next time have to fix our driving style so next time we have to be in 46 and as low in 46 as possible Seventeen races across five continents. This sport is a three billion dollar a year industry. The 
competition is ferocious. The world's best engineers fight for an advantage that can be measured in just thousandths of a second. Formula One cars are designed and built to the limits of technology. Technology that is as secret as the most advanced military projects. Formula One star drivers are global celebrities. The teams exploit their high profile to attract massive corporate sponsorship. The money they bring in gets devoured by the need to improve the cars from week to week. In this relentlessly competitive environment, nobody can afford to stand still. British teams have dominated Formula One for the last 40 years. The Italian Ferrari team is the only other to have any sustained success. The intensity of Formula One is pretty close to warfare, technical warfare certainly. And the British mentality is better at Formula One than any other country in Europe. And that may very well be politically incorrect, but it's an absolute categorical quantifiable fact, we just do it better. But British teams haven't always done it better. No team can win Grand Prix races without discipline, money and attention to detail. This harsh lesson was handed out by the great German teams of the 1930s. They brought professionalism to a sport that had previously attracted gentlemen amateurs the silver arrows of Mercedes-Benz were the pride of Hitler's Germany. Hitler was obsessed with demonstrating that the German nation was the best at everything. And he saw an opportunity to demonstrate how good German engineering, organization and administration were by getting in on Grand Prix racing as it was then enabling Mercedes-Benz to produce extremely advanced motor cars by offering them considerable subsidies. I used to watch them, Mercedes-Benz, in 1937 and 38. Uh, and yes, it was gigantically spectacular. It was noisy, it was fast, it was dramatic, but it was not competitive. I mean, the, the Mercedes and Autos were finished five minutes ahead of everybody else. They were in a totally different league. These Mercedes-Benz W154s crushed the opposition of the 1938 Triple Grand Prix, powered by supercharged 3-litre V12 engines. The success of Mercedes-Benz depended on the organisational genius of this man. With his trilby hat and lounge suit, team manager Alfred Neubauer cut an unmistakable figure in the pit lane. During the First World War, he'd organized the Austrian Army's new motorized artillery units. With the Silver Arrows, he perfected a system of hand and flag signals, which allowed him to communicate information to his drivers during a race. I think every team in Formula One learned from what Mercedes did. They all really are very much like Mercedes were in the 30s, in, in that Absolutely everything is accounted for, the risks are all reduced, everybody knows exactly their function. Uh, as, you, as you can tell from the pit stops, you know, which are so brilliantly organized now, Mercedes invented that uh, 70 years ago. Neubauer watched as Hermann Lang's huge car was refueled and made ready for new tires. One of today's Silver Arrows, a McLaren Mercedes, stands still for just over seven seconds. it was all much slower but with a lead of 13 minutes over the first of the Italian Alfa Romeos Herman Lang had time to spare even so a rare mistake could have cost him the race if not his life unfortunately for Mercedes-Benz and for the rest of Europe Hitler's wider ambitions would put a halt to Grand Prix racing after the 1939 season but not before the Silver Arrows had set the benchmark. The question would be whether anyone could match up to their standards.
If you want to be a racing driver, 